Coming up today on Houston Life, it is game time. We are headed to the field with the Houston Sabercats ahead of their first game of the season. Plus, he's a writer, executive producer, and actor, but you probably know him best as Murr from Impractical Jokers on True TV. We are chatting with James Murray ahead of his comedy show in Houston. Then, crafting for Valentine's Day. We've got two simple DIY gifts that are full of love and the whole family can help make. And fire up your engines. Monster Jam is roaring back into town. We're hitting the dirt for a sneak peek. That's all coming up today on Houston Life. Live from Studio B and KPRC2. Houston Life starts now. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Houston Life on this Thursday, February 3rd, 2022. I'm Derek Shore, along with a familiar face joining us today. You've seen her covering Houston traffic on television, award-winning journalist, foodie, mom, the list goes on and on and on. Catherine Whaley, welcome to Houston Life. Thank you so much. It's a delight to be here, and thank you for having me. It's great to have you. We were sort of laying out, like, things that will happen on the show today. Yes. I warned you, Tex at some point might come and plop himself down on your notes. That's right. They're, they're here. And they're if ready there's for you, Tex. An unexpected aroma that sort of happens during the show. I promise it's not I'm me. I'm it's not Derek. It likely it might <laughs> might be the man. Uh, so it's been a while since I've seen you. Thank you, pandemic. I, I know. mean, it's it's the black in person. hole of time that it seems it has been. Yeah, but for people who don't know a lot about your family, fill us in. Well, I have a two and a half year old William, and so he's just the light of my oh life. Gosh, I remember when you were pregnant with I William. I know, I know, out and about pregnant, and so here we are in our jammies, which is so appropriate because that's how we spend a lot of our days. Is it home? Home and just oh. jammy time. My husband Chris, right there. That's such a and great shot. Yes, no, he is a very, very sweet child. I'm very, very lucky. So we spend a lot of time together oh doing mom and family things. So have been really enjoying family time at home. It's been really a blessing to be able to do that during this time when he's, you know, so young. That is, that's lovely. I mean, they, you never get the time back, right? You really so. don't. And it just goes by like a flash. I mean, they say that. The, right. the days are long, but the years are short, and it, it definitely feels that way. Yeah, the yeah. kids grow up just they like that. I, I know you spent, Catherine, a dozen years with kind of a funky schedule. You were yeah. waking up at like 2 in the morning to go do your job. Mm -hmm. So talk about this adjustment, because obviously having a child changes things, but it's not right. like your life has slowed down at all since you left television. No, no. Well, I will tell you I've adjusted nicely. Getting up at 7 in the morning actually came very easily for me. I was able <laughs> yeah. to snap right back into a more normal, normal schedule but um, but it's been busy I've been doing lots of work doing lots of cooking so that's been a lot of fun I, I follow you on Instagram yes, you do yes. incredible things with food well it's been a passion of mine for a very long time so now I get to kind of do it more more fun and also working with some companies out there and creating recipes and I share that all on my Instagram at Catherine underscore Whaley so it's been fun to do that and kind of work on some fun cooking foodie projects so I've been enjoying that and I think my family enjoys it as well so oh yeah Chris and my husband is like Let's do some more recipe testing. That avocado toast looks so good. And here's the thing <laughs> yeah. about chefs, too. It's one thing to make a meal that is, like, decently good <laughs> to eat. Y your food tastes great, and it also looks so beautiful. Oh, Derek, stop. I mean, I can tell this takes a lot of work to do this, so kudos to you. Well, it's, I mean, thankfully, I enjoy it, so it's fun. But also, I mean, day to day, we're just trying to get meals on the table for the family, so there's a lot of food that just kind of ends up on the plate and delivered to the, the tray or the high chair, too. So, okay, yeah. perfect. Well, the high chair needs it needs food as well. Exactly. So I'm wearing my uh, my little red dress today because yes, tomorrow is you. Wear Red Day for the American Heart Association. They're asking people to wear red and raise awareness. Uh, there it is right there because women it. are disproportionately more likely to experience heart disease. And you're an ambassador for them, essentially. You're helping yes. with the Shop With Heart card. Yes, I am so excited. And thank you, by the way, for representing and wearing the red of dress course. pen. Um, I am the chairing the Shop With Heart card this year, which is a wonderful 10-day shopping event, which kicks off actually in April. It's April 22nd to May 1st, but pre-sales for the card start tomorrow. Now, the deal with Shop With Heart card really is a great, great perk for shoppers out there and, of course, benefits American Heart Association. You get 20% off at some amazing retailers around town for just a $50 donation, and all the proceeds go to American Heart Association. So it really is a win-win, and again, it happens in April, but pre-sales start tomorrow. I actually have a link for that in my profile on Instagram as well. Yeah, you said it. Win-win, and a lot yes. of these retailers are places that don't typically have a lot of sales. You're so right about that. I mean, 20% off at places where you don't normally get any kind of 
discount is yeah. fantastic. And 20% off is huge. So yes. uh, you support a great cause and you can thank stock you. up. Well, thank you for doing that, Catherine. That's oh, lovely. Excited to share. You saw the big news about the River Oaks Theater today, yeah? Yes. That was just, it made me so happy to see that. This yeah. is great. And for many people, native Houstonians who grew up going to this theater, there have been so many people working to preserve this, this theater that's more than yeah. 80 years old. Yes. And the good news is their hard work paid off. Mayor Turner was in attendance at a celebration and news conference. And there, there really are so many hardworking people in our community who spent time volunteering, raising money, raising awareness. And the good news is it is going to be it around yes. for a while. More generations will enjoy it. And really, that theater, too, is just an incredible icon. It is a piece of Art Deco architecture in Houston. It's beautiful. And so they're preserving all of that, which I think is fantastic. Yeah, it'll become a restaurant. So it'll yes. be, you know, a little different, but at least uh, it won't be torn down. So that's fantastic news. Happy to see that. Okay, Catherine. So upstairs before the show, I, <laughs> the conversation, right. cat suits came up. This is a trending article of clothing. Uh, trending apparently in 2022. Maybe they're not the most practical. I know some celebrities have worn them. Something tells me I, you yeah. have an opinion on this. Well, I mean, I considered wearing mine today, but decided maybe I shouldn't do that. Come on. I'm, I'm kidding. Oh, okay. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> Totally kidding. Um, yeah, I mean, I think I'm a very practical dresser. I just want to know how you go to the bathroom in this cat suit. Like, how do you get in and out of it? I, d I don't know. So there's Megan the Stallion. Mm -hmm. And that's, so these are, the cat suit is technically a one piece type deal, right? You, you pull it on. Yes. And so that way, I mean, going to. Or you paint it on, it looks like. <laughs> you, you might. This is Kim K. So is there. Forgive my rudeness. Is there like a slot in the back? I mean, I don't know. I mean, I think about those like pajamas that have like the bottom, you know, the bottom, the bottom button thing. I, I don't think that's built in here, but um, we'll have to ask Kim K. I don't, I don't really know. Well, listen, she looks phenomenal. I she can does, just imagine it would be problematic going into, you know, yeah. like especially if you're in public. Like right. At home, it would be difficult enough. You. You yes. have to essentially pull the whole thing off. Maybe you have a friend who's there to kind of like help you in or out of it. Catherine, that no. seems even more awkward. It does, it does. Can you help me with my cat suit? That <laughs> seems like what if you're out at rodeo? And then you're in line. And, and then you're, you're in, in line for the suit. bathroom and you're like, why is this person <laughs> taking so long? And they out they come in a cat suit. And their cowboy hat and, and their boots. It's just, I don't know. It doesn't, those porta potties are small. They, they, are. they only fit one they person. They really so. are. You can't contort yourself the way you need to to get or, out of it. Or you can't bring a but friend But they look great it. in it. I mean, they look amazing in it. So. They do look amazing. Yes. Uh, is there a, the cat suit for men? Does that exist yet? Well, Derek, I don't know, but you should go investigate. I, I will investigate. Maybe and I'll wear it photos. right here on Houston Life. <laughs> no, that, that. nobody wants to th see that. All right, still to come on Houston Life. What's the craziest thing you would do to get healthy? This next story might be a little bit hard to swallow, Catherine. Oh, yes. And Lauren Kelly is having a monster of a good time this afternoon. Hey, Lauren. Hey guys, we are here getting the dirt ready for this weekend's Monster Jam featuring all of your favorite trucks. Look, I've got the Zombie, I've got Grave Digger, Son of a Digger, and lots more to show you guys. That's when Houston Life returns. Even the Monster Mutt and the Dragonoid. Placentophagy. Say that five times fast. Big Placentophagy. Word. So, in case you don't know immediately what that word means, it's actually when women ingest the placenta after birth. Yes, and apparently there's some some benefits. So, I'm here of, of doing this possibly. Do you know anyone who's ever who's done this? I, I personally don't know anyone who's done this, but I know you can also like have placenta jewelry and preserve that way. Excuse I me? I know it's true. It's true. <laughs> Oh, what? A whole other level. I How know. would you do that? I, dehydrating. It's an involved process. I love your ring. Thanks. It's my placenta. Um, I mean, yes. so this practice of placentophagy has been around apparently for hundreds and hundreds of years. It's nothing new. There's plenty of moms out there anecdotally who say, hey, I feel better. I was less depressed. I produce more breast milk. Experts are uh, not quite in agreement with mm -hmm. saying, I mean, they're it's not ready to recommend yes, mm -hmm. that you eat this. But what's interesting though is uh, and I first heard about this Catherine 20 years ago some people do as you said they'll actually ship it off I mean I've, I've heard of people sauteing it 
mm. and serving it with vegetables. Mm. But some people, they're able to freeze dry it and put it into like a capsule form, as you mentioned, right. making it a little more easy easier to, to swallow, perhaps. Yes, easier um, to swallow. I know. Yeah, and it's also very expensive to do this, apparently. So yeah, a few hundred bucks. You send it off and then have it encapsulated, dehydrated, that whole process. I don't know. I mean, I'd love to hear if anybody has done this. Well, we'll post on uh, my KPRC2 Facebook page the article of a woman who claims that, again, it helped her with breast milk, it helped her feel less depressed after right. a child. Is this something you would ever consider? I mean, me probably no, and being the cook that I am, I just, I'm not sure that it sounds that appealing, but hey, if it works for some people, Go for it. You are so nice. You are so I diplomatic. I love that. Open-minded. I wouldn't eat it. I, I just might have earrings But made. don't, I don't try know. to serve it to me either. So. <laughs> <laughs> Mystery meat. It's right. Okay, let's uh, bring in Joe Sam with today's question of the day. Hi, Joe. Hey, so I have to ask you guys, do you watch Andrew Zimmerman Bizarre Foods? Oh, yes. So if you go back to the episode, he actually eats it fresh off the ground, the placenta, right after birth. This was not a human placenta. It, like, this was a cow's placenta. Okay, so, cow's yes. Well, and that's a good point, too, because cows, dogs, I mean, other animals, the, the mother sure. will slurp up the afterbirth immediately. Yeah, yeah, so he did it for her. So, yeah, it is something to watch, but it had me. Ooh. A little hot sauce. Wow. Yeah, a little Tabasco, seasoning up a little bit. Probably, oh. Some tahini. <laughs> right, you know, that's the question. Sriracha yeah. sauce. Yeah. Sriracha <laughs> sauce will probably help you guys digest it better. We want to hear from you guys. What's the strangest thing you've done in the name of health? Some people are already commenting in on our Facebook page. Jessica writes in, diets. It's all about moderation, of course. The more you deprive yourself, the chances you won't stick with it are high. Very true. That is true. Very, very true. Annette writes in celery juice. Oh. Some people like yeah. celery juice, though. The juicing, you guys do that? Well, Courtney tried know. the green juice thing once. It, it didn't end. <laughs> it didn't work. <laughs> <laughs> didn't work for my Annette writes in, my friend and I tried to freeze fat our our off freeze fat off ourselves and ended up with freezer burn. I've never heard of this before. It was hilarious and painful. Like cryotherapy. Freeze but fat. At home. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I know yeah. some places will freeze your fat, but I don't know if it's a homemade thing yeah. to do. This is very strange. I've never heard of that before, but hey, people are trying it out. Head over to our Houston Life Facebook page, join that conversation. We'll share more of your comments a little later on in the show. The strangest thing I've done was just drink a red glass of wine, of course, every day. Oh, but that's strange. not strange. That's oh, normal. Drink it in red the name wine of health, every day. For sure. <laughs> you, you do it in the name of health. Name but of some health. people say it's strange. I think it's normal. Oh, I don't think it's too bad. <laughs> moderation, know, moderation in all things. Exactly. And I feel like we should point out we don't recommend doing any of these things at home. Mm. The placenta, all yeah, of those right. things. Like, we're not <laughs> doctors. Fine so. print disclaimer right there. <laughs> yes. There you have it. Yes. Okay, it would Joe. be hilarious to watch, though. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. <laughs> Again, okay. please don't try it at home. Thank you, Joe. No problem. Okay, time now to fire up your engines as the most action-packed motorsports experience for families roars back into Houston. That's right. Monster Jam is taking over NRG Stadium this weekend, and Lauren Kelly is on the dirt this afternoon with all the info. Hey, Lauren. Hey, guys. You know what's really cool is before the dirt for the rodeo goes in, this extra special Monster Jam dirt comes in first because this weekend, it's all about the big trucks. And Cam Murphy is here. He's one of the drivers this weekend. We're so excited to have you. Just kind of, we're so glad that Monster Jam is back, right? It's a big family event. How long have you been driving this big old thing? Yeah, so I'm glad. It's just as excited to be back here, just like you. But I have been driving a Bakugan. A Bakugan? Yes, Bakugan, okay, a dragon. Okay since 2019. We debuted this beautiful truck with our beautiful partnership with Spin Master. So I'm just glad to be back here in Houston. Cam, why do you think that so many people come back every single year? They bring their kids. It's a family event. I mean, that alone is, but it's just so fun to watch trick trucks like flip and do crazy things. Yeah, Monster Jam is an unexpected, unscripted, and absolutely unforgettable experience for the entire family, just like you said. But hey, when I was younger, I was coming to these events, and you're going to be talking to Charlie Pocken here a little bit. He's been doing this longer than I've been alive. I <laughs> watched him when I was a little we kid. We tell him that oh, you said no, that. No, 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 not at all. But, <laughs> but no, Monster Jam is a great event for the entire family. And coming to a place like Houston, you guys are rowdy every single time we come here. And, you know, we had an event last weekend. We have two this weekend, yep. one on Saturday, one on Sunday. We have the pit party beforehand, too. If you've never been to Monster Jam, you get to come down, see all the trucks and drivers up close and personal, talk to us, have a ton of fun. But, hey, it's a little chilly out this weekend. Yeah, I know. Come I inside to NRG Stadium. Tunnel, but that was awesome. Cam, thank you so much for the Info. I'm so glad that these tires Absolutely. are so small. I mean, for the both of well, us, right? <laughs>
We're not going to talk up about that. a little that. bit later on in the show, you guys, we're going to talk, like Cam said, to the guy that drives that big old thing, the monster mug. Charlie's going to talk about that. Lots more to come here from NRG Stadium. We're getting our engines ready for this weekend. Cam, thank you so much. Catherine and Derek, back to you guys in the studio. Oh, exciting. I, I can't believe it's already time. And Catherine, that looks just like the first car you had in high school, right? It was watch out, everyone. You know? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yes. And Lauren's standing right there. You really get perspective on how big those tires They're are. They're huge. They're huge. They're huge. Okay, Lauren, yeah. see you in just a bit. That's right. After the break, two easy crafts you can do with your kids to make Valentine's Day sweet. They are very, very clever. There's our guest. We're going to have some fun. Also, later, you know him from the hit TV show Impractical Jokers, but he also tours the world playing sold-out arenas. Comedian James Murr Murray joins us ahead of his next comedy show. Stay right there. Houston Life will be right back. There's nothing sweeter than homemade gifts crafted with love for Valentine's Day. And if you're looking for easy ideas that won't take much time or money, Alexis Geisler, owner of Craftworks, is joining us with two adorable options. Got a little preview yes. here. So, so cute. Alexis, welcome in. Thanks for having me. It's good to be back. Thank so Valentine's Day is one of my absolute favorite holidays. I just think the crafts are so cute for it. And you can make things with your kids. You can make things with your parents. It's really Get fun to do. Family exactly. Yes. So the first project that we're going to make today are these really cute reversible wood blocks. Love and I love them because you can use them in a versatile way in all of your decor. Yes, I love that. Little book waste too. Exactly. Yeah. So you're going to go ahead and take this block and great. some sandpaper and you're just going to sand Sanding any it. rough okay. edges. Here we go. And this is great because you can use scrap wood. You can cut it in any size and then you'll just get some rid of some of the rough edges. All the edges here? Yeah. Great. So this one is something a toddler could do. I absolutely. Love that. You can involve your son. So then once that is sanded, we would paint the whole piece. So we've chosen a mixture of colors. It mm -hmm. just gives it a little bit of texture and diversity. You can really choose any paint colors you like. So you can go ahead and take this paintbrush. You can right. put that down. Okay. And you're just going to take the paint and you're just going to dab it on. And we've cut a stencil here, but if you don't have a machine to cut a stencil, you can go ahead and you're going to just put it right there. Uh, yep. Okay, this <laughs> one, this one, yep. gotcha. So if you don't have a stencil, you can freehand it or you can even pick up a stencil. Stencil at your see our store. stencil here now. That's here we right. go. That's perfect. And then once you've done a couple coats on that, you would go ahead and you would peel the stencil off, and then you've got a really cute design left behind on your wooden block. I love that. And then you can even, if you wanted to, take some sandpaper and rough it up. It gives it that rustic farmhouse look. And you could use initials, like kids' initials. Absolutely. Or, you can put anything cute. on it. So we're going to move on to the next project, which is this really sweet customizable card that we've got. And with the customizable card, I love that you can use your kids. This would be something really sweet for you to use with oh, William to make for that. the grandparents. Yes. And so you just simply take a picture and you'll cut it out of photo paper and you can print it on a printer. We used a little mini printer, whatever you like. Perfect. I see a familiar face right here. Yes, we've yeah, got Tex, Mr. Tex joining right us here with joining the card us. today. Yes. So you can take a toilet paper tube or a paper towel and you're just going to kind of fold it in oh, nice. to make that heart shape. Exactly. That is super easy. Yeah. We love using materials That's that you can cute. find around the house. Yes. And I mean, every toilet paper rod is always empty. <laughs> exactly. So you know you have plenty of these yes. around the house. As the mom being the one exactly. to change it, you can grab them and use it's a craft with them. Somehow. <laughs> exactly. Yes. So now you can go ahead and take this stamp and you can use Perfect. this one if you want. Oh, great. Let's do that. And you're just going to set it into the paint. Right here. Yep. And then you're just going to make a collection of hearts. These are going to be balloons. Super cute. You could do one for every member of the family. You can. And I then you can just that. keep dipping and stamping. Dipping and stamping. That's right. I love that. And this is cute because you could do the pets. You could yes. do the grandkids. Yes, definitely. You could even put a whole family in it if you wanted that to. That is really, really sweet. And of course, I love the red and pink, but I'm sure all different colors would be great. Absolutely. So then once you've put on the stamps where you want them, you can come over here. You would let it dry for a few minutes. And then once it's dried, you can take a Sharpie or any marker, and you're just going to draw the strings from the balloon. And then you can Aww. kind of touch them to Texas right paw. Into Texas paw. Yeah. That's so, so cute. you can see how tiny kind of go down and make a little, a little bouquet. Wavy. This is super easy yes. and just so fun. And it's something that the whole family can do, like you said. Well, what I love about homemade crafts is these become treasures for a lifetime, they really. Do. You, you know, can keep and you them. always remember what the occasion was. Absolutely. That's super, super cute. I love this. And look, final product. Ta-da! 
right here. That's so <laughs> sweet. I love that. That's really Alexis, cute. Alexis, thank you so much. Yes. If you'd like to see the complete instructions for these projects or connect with Alexis, just swing by our website, HoustonLife.tv. And now let's send it back over to Derek for a look at what's coming up next. Hey, Derek. Uh, all right. Thanks, Catherine. Thanks, Alexis. That was fun. After the break, we are taking you back to high school as we take a look inside Alley Theater's latest production. Plus, we'll get a check of your forecast with Frank, including how long we can expect these super low temps. Houston Life will be back in just two minutes. Welcome back to Houston Life. Derek Shore here along with Catherine Whaley in for Courtney today. You having fun so far? It's been a ton of fun. You it's did always a great fun job. watching, so oh. it's fun being a part of it too. Well, that's lovely. The crafts looked great they as were well. Very fun. Thank you, Alexis, for guiding me along there. She was great <laughs> as well. Okay, let's get to more of your responses to our question of the day. Earlier we asked, what is the strangest thing you've done in the name of health? These mm. comments. So mm -hmm. Beverly writes, slept with a sliced onion on the bedside table when I had a sore throat. Is this like an old wives tale? I have no idea, that. but Beverly says it did not help. That actually sounds terrible. It, I mean, it sounds like it might make you cry. Maybe it makes you cry I, and then you I, don't I, focus on the sore throat as it's much. It's a distraction tactic <laughs> yeah. is what it is. So Lisa says, when we were teenagers, my sister and I wore those silver plastic suits to make you sweat. Okay. That's like a weight loss thing. Well, people do like head to toes, like wrestlers Cleansing, yes, will wear right. the head to toe suits and go running. Carol writes in, let husband put rolled up newspaper in my ear and light it on fire to cure my ear ache. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think, I don't think HFD this. would like this. Now either. they sell ear candles in health food stores for that. Carol, thank you for those comments. Please, viewers, do not try that at home. But I know that, yes, melted earwax is a thing. Uh, yeah, they, they do that candling. I don't, okay, yeah, candling your don't, ear. Don't try it at home. Yeah. And then Arturo says, eight raw eggs. So, okay. yes, again, don't consume is, undercooked meat. Is either. that supposed to be a good thing? Because eating raw eggs can make you really, really sick. Well, I hear people can put it in, like, smoothies to help them, like, eat, you know, protein. I don't know. Yeah, I'll Just, pass on. On that. I'll pass on that. What about you? Did you ever do anything? I mean, unusual? I think the most extreme thing I've done is like a liquid three day liquid diet. diet. And that seems very extreme for me. I the foodie that I am. Where you're only like the juice only it was thing. Like juice only. I'm like, I really miss chewing. So. Yeah, or water with yeah. lemon juice and cayenne I know. pepper. I know it's not quite a meal. Dare no matter you? what someone tells you. I did that once yeah. a few years ago, and it, it was feels after. Extreme. After the holidays, you know, we all eat a lot of chocolate. Many of us do anyway. So I did the juice cleanse, and it was it was really something. You survived it, though. Yeah, I, I survived it. Yeah. Okay, well, why don't we check in with Frank? Frank certainly <laughs> been keeping a close eye on the weather. I know. What about you? Anything you've ever done in the name of health? Okay, 90, 1995, so y'all are probably too young to remember. People were, like, growing mushrooms in this, like these mushrooms and, and uh, like a vinegar, and then you you'd get one from somebody it had to be from their mo and and you would eat it and it would give you health and make you feel good does that ring a bell at all no. i'm gonna have to google this i know i should have googled it before i stepped up here because it, it tasted horrible i took one bite said i'm not doing that <laughs> wait but frank someone has to give you the mushroom yeah you're you, to you grow your mushroom you had to get it from their mushroom it was like a it's like a mushroom trade yeah thing. it was probably a pyramid scheme from mushroom to mushroom mlm yes wow yeah okay. i'm gonna google it well, I am too. I'm okay, very Google curious. It, now. Google it, let me know if you see anything. Okay, I'll do it right now. Okay, okay. okay. temperatures are cold, cold, cold. C O L D. Look at this, already freezing. Columbus, Brenham, 32 in Huntsville, almost there in Conroe and Wharton, 38 in Houston. And let's talk about the wind. Out of the north, these are sustained winds, 15 to 29 miles an hour in Palacios, gusting to 36. So you take those 30s and you factor in these winds that are easily at 20 miles an hour, and the feels like numbers already at 19 in Columbus. Columbus, 21 Brenham, Huntsville, 23 Conroe, and this isn't going to get any better. It's just going to stay cold, and it's going to stay bone-chilling cold all night long into tomorrow morning. We'll take a closer look at the precipitation. I want to show you there's a, just a lot of watches and warnings. But should, we could spend all of Houston life going over all of these. Wind chill warnings, winter storm warnings, hard freeze warnings, winter weather advisories, wind advisories. Suffice it to say, we could see an eighth of an inch of ice up here around Navasota and up toward Madisonville. Temperatures in the 20s, an icy glaze elsewhere is a possibility. Those winds are going to be there. The wind chills could see some mixture of sleet and freezing rain. Already getting some reports of this up around Pinehurst and Magnolia. And you see a little of the pink coming through. Also some freezing rain down around Weimar on I-10. So we're getting at least some reports already. 
So that's what we have coming in. This precipitation is on the light side. The future cast continues. This is right now continues to pull it across Harris County. And you can see I'm going to stop it at six right across for the commute, which is happening already, and continues to push it right toward the coast as we get toward nine o'clock. It's in the coastal counties, eastern Harris County. As we get toward 10 o'clock, it's beginning to move off of here. And so maybe a little coastal shower or two in the overnight, but this is really a this evening event as far as precipitation coming in. But those temperatures Temperatures, if there's any rain on the roads, any liquid roads, those temperatures could come in and certainly cause some glazing and some ice issues. So the future cast is for that, and we're just kind of having a look here at the best potential for some glazing, which is going to be on the west side. So as, as it gets closer to the coast, it's a less chance, but really bridges and overpasses, we'll talk about at 4 o'clock because it's going to be a bit of a mess later on this evening. If you don't have to travel, I just simply wouldn't. Here's your hour by hour. You can see for this is for Houston. Temperatures right at freezing, continue at 32 and then 30, 29, 28, 4 a.m., 5 a.m., and those wind chills right there in the teens and the low 20s. So this is not last February when we had 44 hours below freezing, but some of you, especially if you're going to, into freezing now, you may not get out of it until tomorrow afternoon. So you may have even a longer than a 12-hour freeze for a lot of you folks to the north and west. Coldest temperatures last year were 13. We're not going to get that close, fortunately. Uh, wind, wind chills were zero. We're going to be cold but not quite that. We had seven freezing days uh, in 2021. We, we are looking for three overnight tonight and again on Saturday and then again on Sunday. So here's that forecast and you can see 20% chance tomorrow morning of that coastal shower. It's really tonight that we'll see the rain 28 and 40 for a high. So it does not get very high tomorrow. 30 and 48 Sabercats game is Saturday night. That's their opener 30 and 56 Sunday and then 50s and 60. So we do warm up and look at this symbol. That's called the Super Bowl next Sunday and the Olympics going on with all of that. It's crazy out yeah, there. Yeah, busy, Be busy. Very busy, busy time of year. Anything and on the mushroom? Yeah. Listen, I looked, Frank. I Googled mushrooms, vinegar, 1990s food trends. I got nothing. So maybe you were aware of a trend that we weren't, but <laughs> when you find out more, <laughs> very curious. I'll take these you mushrooms for you. <laughs> okay. The Frank. picture of health, so perhaps it works, you know? Yeah, yeah. yeah, that's true. I did fine without it. <laughs> you did. Yes, yes. Thank you, Thanks, Frank. Frank. We'll see you in a bit. Well, if you're looking for something to do this weekend, you may want to check out Alley Theater's latest production, High School Play, A Nostalgia Fest. Yeah, I had the chance to sit down with the playwright Vichet Chum to learn more about this very cool show. High school nostalgia. Yes. This is like bringing back the good memories of high school, right? Talk about the concept of this show. Yeah, you know, I, I went to high school back in 2003, 2004. That's when I graduated. And, you know, I really wanted to create this story about transformation, about young people finding their voices, um, using theater as a conduit to express themselves. Um, and so I wrote this play, this crazy wild play. A crazy wild play. I think high school memories. I mean, I still have dreams about high school. I don't know about you. Nightmares, yeah. Night Nightmares. Yeah. Okay. And good dreams. Good dreams. The good and the bad, yeah, right? Yeah. So, how much of your personal story, your personal life, ended up on the pages of this script? That's a tricky question. <laughs> Tell us I mean, everything. a lot. You know, a lot landed on the page, um, and uh, a lot did not. You know, uh, it's. I, I was a theater kid growing up, and so you know, it was a very unique time. It was a special time for me. Um, I had a lot of mentors who were, you know, a lot. They were very extra, but they were also, you know, they cared about us a lot, and so. So, you know, I really wanted to, you know, chronicle that story and that time period in my life. Give us a brief synopsis of how the, the play unfolds on stage, just highlights of the storyline. Yeah, so it's about this competitive theater troupe. Um, they have just suffered a loss from last season, um, and so they're sort of on the climb to regain their title, and uh, they are, you know, going through all the antics of competitive high school theater. Oh, okay, that's yeah. a good tease. I'm loving these cast photos yes. we're seeing now. So the play I mean, on a scale of like one to ten, what's the fun factor of the show here? The fun factor is, you know, these kids, these young people who are experiencing so many things and everything is so big. I mean, if you remember that time period in your life, things felt so important. Oh, yeah. And so I think the theatrics is just like following this group of young people trying to figure things out. High school, I mean, it, it just seems like bringing up, as we mentioned, high school memories, it can be a good thing. It might be a, a bit traumatic. Uh, I'm sure a lot of the, the audience will be able to identify with what's happening on on stage, what do you hope they walk out of the theater with? Hey, 
I think it's that Stephen Sondheim quote, you know, children will listen. Um, you know, children are impressionable and they are dealing with a lot of big things. And, and so for me, it's this relationship between, you know, the older generation and younger people and, and, and understanding how delicate that relationship is. So uh, the director of the show, Tiffany Nicole Green, she is uh, Houstonian. She's yes. native Houstonian. Mm -hmm. And let's talk about the cast, because this is something every time I go to the alley, I am so blown away by the level of talent on the stage here. Coming from New York City, this is a pretty cool honor for you to be working with such an incredible cast. Oh my gosh, the cast is phenomenal. You know, it's anchored by Todd Wade and Melissa Pritchett, who are company members at the Alley, and phenomenal. they are just a riot. I mean, you should just come for the costumes. I mean, it's a riot, what they're doing on that stage. Um, and then the ensemble of young people who are sort of a collection of Houston actors and then also from other places, and uh, they just really have a synergy that's really special. There you have it. If you would like to buy tickets for High School Play and Nostalgia Fest, you can check out alleytheater.org. We'll also have a link on our website, HoustonLife.tv. Coming up next on Houston Life, when he is not on camera creating a TV show, you know, as one does, or writing his next book, there he is, traveling the world, entertaining audiences. James Murr Murray joins us next. Find out where you can catch his comedy show this weekend right here in Houston. We'll be right back. It is a guy with a tattoo working out right next to you, Mark. <laughs> uh, get in there, Mark. I, excuse me, I'm sorry. I thought only chicks had tattoos like that. The, 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 right? I thought it was, uh, like, only chicks have that. You know, <laughs> carry on with the conversation. I'm going to be... <laughs> oh, my gosh. So awkward, so awesome. All, all of the things, right? That was a clip from Impractical Jokers on True TV. James Mur Murray is one of the guys making us laugh with some of the most outrageous pranks we have ever seen. This weekend, we have the chance to see him live in Houston at the Improv. Murr is joining us live now on the show. Murr, dude, I'm telling you, you are probably the bravest person I think I've ever met. When you go into these pranks, do you have to kind of like psych yourself up? How do you do it? I, I just try very hard not to get my butt whooped, you know what I mean? Like, my, my goal is just not to get punched in the face. Everything else is just collateral damage. So I'm, I'm trying very, very hard. I, I don't. Luckily, I don't have a punchable face. I look like the kind of, I look like your pharmacist. I don't look like a tough guy, you know what I'm saying? A punchable face, that you do not have, I would agree. So listen, we've seen you on Impractical Jokers, and you guys are, are just so funny. And what a lot of people might not realize you are a writer, executive producer, an actor. You have done so many things. You worked as a senior vice president of development for North South Productions for more than 10 years. I mean, talk to us a little bit about when in life you realized you had this gift of creativity and the ability to make people laugh. Uh, I realized it uh, uh, probably about a, a month and a half ago is when I finally felt like I had made it even though the show's been on 11 years now I, I feel like i it was about a month or two ago where i found was like you know maybe this is working out i uh, know you know the, the guys and i from jokers have been friends our whole life we always dreamed of doing this but we failed for like 11 years before we got on tv uh so now to be in shooting season 10 coming up uh every day has been a, a blessing and i'm glad i'm part of people's families you know well i think it's incredible you only recently realized what a big deal you are and thank you for all the laughs, <laughs> over the years please send our best to all the guys you have five published titles and four more books on the way international best-selling author what are the new books about uh, the, the, gosh, my laptop is propped up on one right now. The, the Stowaway just came out a few months ago. That is a about a serial killer on a transatlantic cruise. And there's only one woman on board who can stop him. It's a great mystery thriller. Uh, we have a, a children's, a middle grade children's book series coming out from Penguin Random House in a month and a half called Area 51 Interns. It's about a group of kids who uh, get a summer internship at Area 51. And the day they start work, all hell breaks loose. And it's up to the kids to save the day every single book at Area 51. It's a great, thrilling, funny read for kids. Uh, that comes out in just a few weeks. Okay, fantastic. Congrats on the books. By the way, uh, Nicholas Cage, I can't believe I haven't asked you about this so far. He's, uh, he, he, he's very quiet. Uh, 
I, I don't like to name drop. We're, we're, we're buddies. We're pals. He, he pops in and out to interviews from time to time. He might be there this weekend in Houston and Dallas on Saturday, Sunday. He might show up at the show. You never know. You don't know who's going to show up at Mer Live. So, and it's a family-friendly show, so bring the entire family, all ages. And who knows? You might have a celebrity sighting or two. Okay, we love surprises. And he, Nicholas Cage, he's doing a very good job at supervising yeah. this interview right now. Thank you, Mr. Cage. Yeah. Let's talk about the tour. So, when you're not at home with your wife in New Jersey and your cute little pup Penny, uh, you're on mm -hmm. tour. So, essentially, you travel the world making people laugh. I know people are so thrilled and pumped to see you in Houston this weekend. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, the, the tour is great. It's Mer Live. It's all ages. Uh, kids can come, everything like that. Uh, it's a combination of telling stories from impractical drivers. I answer some fan questions. I borrow a couple of audience members' cell phones at one point, and I might text people on your behalf. I shot hidden camera challenges just for the live show that you can't see anywhere else. And if you're very, very, very lucky, I might even show uh, my driver's license photo, which still to this day has no eyebrows on it because oh. of the TV show. Oh. <laughs> what? Okay. Well, that's a good yeah. look. That is a good look. <laughs> I think you take the cake for best driver license photos uh, I've ever seen. We're going to put the, the, the details up on the screen so people can buy tickets. I know there are just a few tickets left for this weekend. Again, family friendly. Before I let you go, though, has there ever been a time or when you just couldn't do it? When the guys have gotten in your ear and they've said, okay, do this, do that, say this, and, <laughs> and you couldn't bring yourself? To it. The, the closest I came to rejection was uh, they threw me out of an airplane against my will to go skydiving. I'm terrified of it. And I was so scared. I ran off set. I locked myself in the bathroom for a half hour crying. I wouldn't come out. And from the bathroom, I FaceTimed my mother to say goodbye and I love her because uh. I thought that was the end of me. And my mother rejected the call because she was shopping at Macy's at the time. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, well, I'm glad that you had the opportunity to call her once again after that experience. James Murray, it is so nice to meet you, and uh, you are just as real as they come. So thanks for making us laugh, and congrats on all thanks your success. I appreciate it. We'll see you very soon. And in the meantime, to our viewers, you can visit our website, HoustonLife.tv, for a link to get those tickets to Murr Live. Once again, it is happening Saturday at the Houston Improv. Now let's shift gears and check back in with Lauren, who has some excitement for the entire family this weekend. Hey, Lauren. Hey, Derek, shifting gears is right. We're here at the Dirt for Monster Jam happening this weekend, and this has been such a cool experience. As you can see, they're really still setting up for this weekend's event, happening Saturday and Sunday, and here is one of the veterans, the legends, to talk with us now, Charlie Pawkin. You've been giving us just kind of the info about all of these trucks. How long have you been driving with Monster Jam? I've actually been with Monster Jam for for 35 years now, so it's like I've, I've pretty much driven everything, been all over the place and experienced so much. Right now you're in Monster Mutt, but you did have, you were in the Grave Digger, which is one of the most famous ones. For how long did you drive yeah. that trap? Um, actually, actually, I was in a Grave Digger for about 22 years. I've driven Monster Mutt before. I'm well known for driving it in 2010 and winning the freestyle in Las yeah, Vegas. Yeah, the winner freestyle, with us, so. baby. That's what I'm talking yeah. about. We jokingly said that these tires <laughs> are as big as us, but you told us how much they weigh. They're how tall? They are basically, it, they are called a 66 inch BKT tire and they weigh in about 850 pounds. Oh apiece. man, that's a nice light tire and you got four <laughs> of them on this truck. So what was really cool is you showed me how to get in this truck. It's not like a normal step up, but can I, can I go ahead yeah, and get in? Yeah, we don't have doors on these. Most of the trucks you actually okay. enter All right. by climbing I'm, up underneath the I'm climbing in like a body. jungle gym. I've gotten a lesson, you guys. I went to Monster Jam University and I got a little bit of studying in in between our breaks here and, and there's just one chair. Uh, you you know, it's kind of a snug little little seat up here. But but Charlie, I passed the driving test. Can I go ahead and can I start it? You did. You passed. I passed. She's 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 fully cleared to start this on her own. I'm fully cleared. Are you guys ready? I'm I'm going. But HoustonLife.tv for all the information and tickets on this weekend's Monster Jam. If I don't come back to the studio, Derek, you know that I'm going to be driving around this track here at NRG Stadium the rest of the day. Derek and Catherine, back to you guys for now. I'm Watch out, world. Up here.
<laughs> wow, Lauren. I mean, jaws are on the floor. I didn't yeah. know this was going to happen. So you be super careful, but have a ton of fun. How could you? Not? I will. Thank you, guys. Nothing like the sound of an edge. I know. The smile on her face, too, says it all. <laughs> I know. She's in her element, for she sure. Is. Watch out. Okay, well, speaking of action packed sports, let's go to Joe Sam, who has more on another type of sport. Yeah, we are having fun all day today. Coming up, we're learning all about the game of rugby from our professional team, the Houston Sabercats, just before their season opener. Stay right there. More Houston Life will return. Welcome back. The Sabercats were founded in 2017 and compete in Major League Rugby, the top level rugby union competition in the United States and Canada. I headed to their home, the Viva Stadium, to give it a try. Hey, we're at the Aviva Stadium. I do not know anything about rugby, but we're here with the Houston Sabercats to help me out. And I have Rob here on hand to give me that information. Break it down for us. What are the Houston Sabercats? The Houston Sabercats is Houston's pro rugby team. We play in the MLR, which was founded in 2018. We're here at Aviva Stadium, which was built in 2019. And we're gonna get into it today. Oh yeah, and I'm ready to get into it. So what's the first thing that I need to learn how to do to become a part of this team? So we start with 15 players on a team. We're gonna recruit you in today and we're going to start with some passing. Let's do it. Awesome. What we do is we have two hands around the middle of the ball, okay. like so. We point the end of the ball down to the ground. Our ball comes onto our hip and then we just push the ball down and through to our target. Down here? Yes, perfect. And down and through. Good. <laughs> You guys are so smooth. All right, now that we got the passing down, what's next? Now we're going to go into some kicking. So one of the ways to score points in rugby is if you have a penalty, you take a kick off the floor, off a tee like we have here, and kick it through the posts. Let's get to kicking. Easy. What we want to really try and focus on is getting our pillar towards the target. So as we hit it, we're going to come down and carry on running towards the posts. So we run up. Woo! That's good. I ain't gonna be able to do that. <laughs> I can't get it. If you lean back slightly more, it'll help with your trajectory as well. Okay, last attempt. There we yes! go. Yes, <laughs> there he is. I nice joke. Hey. <laughs> All right, so running towards him. We're gonna do the whoop de doop. And then we're gonna score the goal. We're ready for it? Yep. All right, three, two, one. <laughs> yeah! Hey! <laughs> Rob, thanks so much for showing me all about this amazing sport, rugby. Do you think I can join the Houston Sabercats? Oh, I think you can get in. All right, I'm ready for my jersey. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was my winning dance, my scoring the winning score. We're going to be talking more about the Sabercats. They just announced their 16-game schedule for the 2022 season and will kick off the first match this Saturday at 7 at Aviva Stadium. For more of their entire schedule, I have a link on our website, HoustonLife.tv. Now, we have to ask you guys, do you think you can get out there and do what I did? Yeah, it I'm looks really sure. fun. Sure. Yeah, <laughs> and with I, the scrum, you know. Yeah. You did a good fun. job. Also, I think there's job. an appetite for it here in Houston. There. I mean, the crowds <laughs> are getting bigger and bigger mm -hmm. every single week, right? And that stadium is beautiful. It is absolutely beautiful. Something that I had to discover here. And since you guys said you think you can do it, we're going to put your skills to the test. So we want to bring out Christian, Gary, and Dean <laughs> with the Saber Cats here. <laughs> Thanks so much for coming in. And you know what? We're going to have a good time because they're going to be putting you to the test and seeing if you hey. can actually participate with the rugby. You guys, you're, you're all so much taller than me. You're I blocking know. me out the way. We're we're gonna gonna do do <laughs> we can do this. We'll be right back after a quick break with the Sabercats, getting them to the test. Thanks for coming in, guys. Welcome back, you guys. It is time for the Sabercats to teach our host a lesson in rugby today. Christian, you're going to be explaining the 
throw up and who's going to be our tosser? We have the tosser right here. Right. So I'm going to let you guys take it away, Catherine and Derek. Y'all have some fun. This is going to be exciting. Let's learn more about rugby. Great. <laughs> so this is what we call a line out and it's basically a restart of play. So if there's a penalty, we have the option to kick to touch, um, advance down the field, and then we have the line out. And our uh, special lady is going to be called the hooker. She's the one the tossing hooker. it in. And Derek is going to be jumping. So <laughs> wish us luck. We mean that, Catherine, in the best way yes. possible. Invite me on. <laughs> That's what I get to do. So here we go. OK, and you right. guys are going to do all the work. I just have yep. to just, jump up. You jump up, keep your head. Jump your up and grab the ball. Any tips it's for like me? It's like cheerleading, right? Stay, stay strong and stiff. Okay. Stay strong and stiff. Stay strong and stiff. <laughs> and focus on the ball. And focus on the ball. Okay. Okay. I'm going to stay okay. strong and stiff. OK. OK, here we go. When I say 3-2. Two, one. We're going up. We got it. Okay. okay. Here we go. Three. Ready? Two. One. Jump and I won! Oh! <laughs> yeah, that was great, man. That was amazing. Right. That was amazing. Nice. Thank you, guys. Oh, Thank man. you so much. Saber Cats, welcome to town. Yep. We got to get out to a game, Catherine. I know. Good job. It's weekend. Grab our hookers and get out there. <laughs> <laughs> got it, Derek. Okay. Hey, Catherine Whaley, thank you so much thank for filling in for, for Courtney me. today. Guys, thanks for coming by. Thank thanks for the lesson. That was a lot of fun. That does it for Houston Life today. We're going to send it on over to Keith and Christine in Studio A. Hey, guys. Yeah, hookers and tossers. We didn't know which direction this was going to go. <laughs> but, um, right time. Yeah, Derek. Just Way stay stiff and jump. The the studio. Yes. <laughs> we really got to get out to a game. Is the hooker. Yeah, love if, it, if you go like it. this, you're falling forward. <laughs> So that's the best way I can. All right, guys. It's all about the form. Okay. Yeah. All right. All right. Okay. You guys have fun. Thanks. Go Sabercats. All right. Go Sabercats.